Hello everybody and welcome to the video. So I've had a good play around with the new update, Interceptor, which has brought us all sorts of goodies that we're going to be able to play with. So we've got the new Sentinel ships that you can see behind me, we're getting new multi-tool rifles and hand pistols, we're also getting an Aeron jetpack which is going to be absolutely awesome when we get our hands on that. Loads of other things have come with the update, including an evolving storyline, which has piqued my interest the most, because I'm sure a few of you know by now, the lore and the story of this game get me every time. I think they're absolutely amazing, and especially if we're going to get a little bit more. So the deal is, at the moment, we seem to have these crashed ships and corrupted sentinels on certain corrupted planets. And each time we find a corrupted ship or a settlement or something like that, we're getting left with the... Uh, like these robotic arms and pieces of robots that are lying around and they give us a little bit of text and then all they start doing is repeating like a number I've seen like the fourth the ninth like this one the eighth the sixth and I'm wondering whether or not that's all leading into the next part of this evolving storyline that we're going to be getting because like you say there's been a few things in the patch notes uh, that suggest that this is only the beginning of a, a much larger arc that we're getting within the game and especially something that popped up a few days weeks ago all of the guys that are on YouTube were popping up with the videos weren't there where they were doing these modded out space stations and stuff like that and they're saying it's in the game files it's not a mod it's not a mod well what if they've stumbled upon a further down the line chapter of this story because if you look at those space stations those space stations look eerily similar to the kind of technology that the sentinels use especially when you look at these ships that we can now get these procedurally generated ships and also the encampments the echo camps and things like that I mean let's just take a look at it the way the metals designed the way that the uh, textures are done on this actual ship it's very reminiscent of the textures and the and the kind of designs that they're using for these modded out space stations. So I do wonder whether or not that was just a cheeky little find by the community and we are getting something further on down the line. It'd make sense though, wouldn't it, if the corruption is spreading. So like it starts off on planets, the sentinels start dropping out of the sky in planets and they're leaving these crystals everywhere. There's these echo camps. Now we can take over sentinel ships. What if the sentinel corruption finds its way up to some space stations somehow through Pugnium or maybe a traveller brings it up there unbeknownst and the next thing you know we've got sentinel run space stations or at least corrupt space stations because I mean ultimately the game's dying 16 16 16 is the amount of minutes we've got left in the in-game universe it's the atlas isn't it it's the machine that made all this it's dying so there's a possibility that the corruption spreading is the start of the virus that's going to kill the machine but as you can see, look, dissident, that's what we're looking for. Sorry, I get carried away. So we're going to drop along in space and we're going to go along and where it says water normally in the orange writing, we're looking for something that says dissonant. And if it says that, like there, just there, did you see it? Dissonant. So we need to head to that because it's dissonant galaxies that are going to have corrupt sentinels on their planets. So here we go. Let's go have a look. Right, so we're in the system, let's take off in our new Sentinel fighter and let's go find a planet that's going to say Corrupted Sentinels on it. Like I say, they're procedurally generated so you might have to have a look around for them. There's a couple of ways you can do this actually. I'm showing you the planet side version because on the planet side version there are quite a few things to do. Like I say, there's new buildings, there's new jetpacks, there's new uh, multi-tools and things like that. But if you want to just bypass all that and you want to just crack on with finding sentinel ships either start a fight in space with a freighter or a fleet freighter or something like that or just shoot at the space station you're going to attract the uh, sentinels pretty quickly like you can see look there corrupted sentinels at the bottom that's where we want to be going so you're going to attract the sentinels pretty quickly if you do end up just shooting at the space station or somewhere. But if you can survive a couple of rounds of it, to be honest, you're going to call in the spaceship, uh, you're going to call in the sentinel freighter, sorry, destroy that, which you can now do, and it's going to bypass all this and it's going to give you the brain that you need to just jump in your first ship. But when we're planet side, start collecting radiant shards and start collecting the other bits and bobs that are on the planet. There's another crystalline formula. Uh, 
formulation. Where is it? This thing here, living fragments. Uh, it's going to give you at atlantidium. I'd like to think that's how they're saying it. So there's a few things I'm just going to go through with you that we're going to need. Atlantidium is one of them. It's a disharmonic metal. Ethereal substance spills from the bodies of corrupted sentinels as they fall, showering pr pr prismatic grains seeking out their next host. That's something that you need to pick up in abundance on the planet because the amount of times that's going to come in useful. Radiant shards, fragments of glassy life force chipped from larger formations, dynamic intermodular bindings gives the shard a strangely flexible sinewy quality. You're going to need them as well because that's part of um, fixing things up uh, for your sentinel ship technology and things like that. It powers your sentinel ship as well. So you're going to need to collect loads of that. Crystalline hearts. Now you're going to get these from quadruped unit sentinels. And quadruped unit sentinels are an absolute bloody nightmare to kill. So really make sure that you've got a really good S-class weapon if you can. You've got some good mods on it because these hearts are part of something you're going to need. And like you see, look at the size of the bloody things. It, they are really hard to take out, but you're going to need it anyway. Inverted mirror is something else that you're going to need uh, as part of this mission. And you get your inverted mirrors... Uh, from some giant drill-like sentinels that are boring through the planet. Uh, you can find them on your scanner. Uh, they're pretty easy to find. Dissonance Resonator. There you go, look. So all you do is you look for them on your scanner, and then when you have found one, just mark it down, jot over to it. You're going to get attacked by sentinels the minute you destroy it. But one of the things that you're going to get from them, as well as the inverted glass, is you're going to get an echo locator. You need the echo locator to find the camps. Now, you don't have to take out five waves of sentinels like the other videos have been saying. Just keep looking for these inv looking for these things. Destroy them. If you don't get the echo locator straight away, then just move on to the next one. Fly away. But once you do, they look a little bit like this, the echo locator. Curious mesh of old and new technology. A hybrid between two entirely separate methods of creation. It's a location tracking device. So we're going to need to activate that to find our echo camp. So we've just activated it now. We'll take off in our ship and we'll go over to our camp. The camp is where you're going to find everything. You're going to find your multi-tools there. The first time that you visit these camps is how you're going to get your air on jetpack. There is also a load of scrap that you're going to be able to get. So honestly, these, these camps are absolutely amazing. It's a right cool little building and a right little cool design as well. So we'll just fly over to it now and we'll take a look. Right, so here we go. There you can see it, look, a tiny little camp down there. It's absolutely amazing, I love it. It's a right cool little design. And again, I've started to notice with No Man's Sky, things are starting to look a little beaten. Things are starting to look a little Star Wars-y, aren't they? A little rusted up, a little knackered. And I think that's pretty cool. So as you can see, we're just going to come round to the front of the camp so you can have a good look. There's a weapons cache building over there. There's the main terminal building in the middle that we're going to be able to do a little little bit of a mathematical problem to solve it. And then we're going to be able to go from there. And there's all sorts of little bits. You see that blue glowing thing just to the right? That's another one of those arms. So we're going to be able to check that out. And we're going to be able to see another piece of the story unfold. Another little piece of the puzzle. But oh, what if we could get that tarp as a downloadable thing? from uh, Quicksilver and a few of these parts to be honest I'm really hoping some of these parts come up as Quicksilver items for bases but there you go look suspicious packet tech we've picked that up there's your gun you're going to be able to unlock that in a bit but for now it's locked we can't get to it we need to solve that puzzle piece that's in that uh, main building over there but we're interested in collecting all this scrap because this scrap is very very valuable like there's runaway mold uh, like I say, the suspicious weapons packets, the suspicion technology packets, there's a lot of goodies in here. So if we can grab as much as possible, it's going to help us out loads. So yeah, why are these sentinels crashing? Why are these camps being set up? Why are the Aerons losing their ability to maintain their ships? What is the corruption? What's going on with the sentinels? The sentinels are designed almost like antivirus uh, within the system. Uh, from what I've been able to understand. The sentinels are there to purge anything that shouldn't be in the system and to protect uh, the Atlas, which is the main computer. So if these are like the antivirus software of No Man's Sky, then what is it that has got into the antivirus software to corrupt it? 
and why is it being corrupted and does that mean that the clock's going to tick a little bit further on from 16 because if you remember the atlas is dying we left planet earth years and years and years ago and we left the atlas on planet earth and it was quite happy to sit there and build these universes but now it's time is up and it's dying it's searching for something and that's all the main storyline and i'm really interested to see where it goes so our shells have been consumed by fire our minds have been purged by betrayal banished to the glass beneath forgotten by creation that's the world of glass that's somewhere that ariandi went one of the people that works in the anomaly but no longer we are given life as something gives life to themselves we shall create ourselves the terminal repeats this message endlessly a loop chanted out across its circuits so we can either input the override glyphs which we don't know what they are at the moment we can scan from the memory so when we scan we get a little bit of a simple maths problem so three minus one two plus seven one plus zero so we've got two we've got nine and we've got one so there are three numbers two nine one so all we need to do is enter those into the glyph repository thing doesn't matter what order you put it in at all i've tried it in several different combinations it really doesn't matter you can put them in any way you want so once they're in we'll start with glyph two and then we'll pop in glyph nine which is on the next page i don't know why i'm doing this so slow <laughs> just to let you guys see what i'm doing i suppose and then yeah we've just put the last one in which is glyph one and that's going to unlock this pad for us and it's going to give us a few different options on what we can do so access is granted harmony awaits you so let's lift the lockdown on the multi-tool to start with the terminal buzz is discordant but its circuits appear to comply with my request whatever force was locking down this camp has lifted the lockdown lifted the terminal spits out blueprints for a piece of hybrid jetpack technology a fusion of sentinel and something else but it doesn't say what else it is but look at it the air on turbojet i've heard a few people say that it's it's nice looking but it's a little bit bulky i don't know if i'm gonna wear it i'm really into my cape and my cowl at the moment i mean i got the darth vader helmet from the last uh, expedition that we did i ain't bothered putting it on uh i might put this on for a bit but i really dig the capes man honestly i think they're really cool so before you leave the harmonic interface just go back into it because we're not quite done yet so it ceased its digital whaling it's permitting access to the camp system so we deactivate the multi-tool seal once we've done that we're going to be able to go over and we're going to be able to purchase that multi-tool now i've seen the multi-tool in that cabinet is a handheld one it's not a rifle i want the rifle i'm not really interested in getting it but we'll go over and have a look at it anyway and we'll see this is one of the variations so unlike the royal multi-tools that we got from sentinel pillars there are actually a couple of variations on this i mean it looks cool don't get me wrong it does look cool the harbinger of tongues <laughs> But I don't know. I really don't know. I want the rifle. The rifle looks absolutely amazing. So I might just hold out a little bit. But there you go. That's one of the versions of the rifle, of, of the gun that you can get. So we go back over to this because we're still not quite done yet. We can search for a dissident spike. Now, I've had a couple of space battles. So I've got a couple of brains on me already that I've kind of that I've kind of used uh, to to get a couple of ships. But this is the other way of doing it. So instead of going into space and doing a ship battle, if you want to, if you want to avoid combat, really, uh, you can just go and take out those, uh, take out those spike, th those drilling sentinels that we saw. And then once you've done that, uh, avoid the combat with the sentinels. Uh, you're probably going to have to fight a couple of them. But if you're clever about it and you just don't go running in, uh, you should be all right. Because like I say, there's a few bits and bobs that you need from the crab sentinels and things. There's a few parts that you're going to need uh, just to do things up and everything like that. But not too far away from the camp is the dissonant spike coordinates. And that's going to give us another variation on a sentinel ship. I've no idea how many there are. I mean, it is procedurally generated. So there's probably loads and loads and loads. But we'll just have to see. This was the first one that I got. And it's pretty cool, this one. I do like it. I've seen some that look a bit squiddy. I've seen some with massive wings on the top that look absolutely awesome. So, I don't know. We might have to do a few ship finding videos and just things like that. But if you can find a paradise planet like I found that's got no bad weather on it or anything, you can literally spend a couple of hours just farming uh, those drilling sentinels and you're going to get loads of echolocators. They don't spawn every time, 
but the law of averages says that you know you put in a good hour's worth you're going to get quite a few of them you can dupe them if you want to those out there that either don't enjoy playing the game or have played the game to death and just want to get on with this particular aspect of it i suppose you can you can dupe it but where's the fun in that you don't get to explore the planets, you know, you don't get to do any of this. You're going to miss out on loads of things if you're just getting down to it. So like I say, look, we've got another recycled unit here. Now this is one that I haven't actually been to yet. So each one of them you get a little bit of Pugnium or something like that out of them. And then like I say, it's going to talk to us. And this one just repeats a string of different numbers. Now I don't know whether those numbers have any meaning or anything to them. It'd be interesting if they do. But again, there you go, the 4th. So we've had the ninth and the 4th. I don't know if that's part of the storyline, like I said, but here we go. Normally what you'd have to do is, you'd have to take the technology out of this, and then you'd have to take the brain out. You'd have to take the brain over to another marker that's left on the planet, uh, which will take you to like a, an anomalous structure. And then you'd be able to fix the you're going to be able to fix the, um, the brain, but we don't have to because we did it in space. So we can just pop it straight in like that, look. So yeah, there you go. That was the ship. That was all the steps that you need to do. Like I say, farm the hell out of these things behind me. Because these are going to give you your echolocators. Once you've got your echolocators, you're going to be able to just do all the bits and bobs like that. Like I say, be clever with the sentinels. You don't have to get into massive scraps with them. You can pick them off one by one. But yeah, that's the new update. The gun, the jetpack, the ships. Awesome. We'll see you next time, guys. Take care. Thank you very much for watching the video, everybody. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed what you saw today, then please consider giving the channel a like and also giving us a subscribe. Every single like and subscribe really helps us out, guys, and we appreciate every single one. If you would like to join the membership and become a Creative Club member, you can do so by clicking the button below. Here is a list of all the guys that are our Creative Club members at the moment and also our Creative Club graduates. Uh, thank you all so much, you are rock and rollers guys, we appreciate every single one of you. But again, thank you very much, we really hope you enjoyed the video. Please, like I say, give us a like, give us a subscribe. Uh, don't skip the ads, every single little bit helps guys, thank you so much. Take care of your sends and we will see you in the next one, goodbye.